Welcome to To the Foothills, a Colorado lifestyle and real estate podcast featuring mountain home real estate broker Robert Martin, who has over 25 years of experience assisting clients reach their goals and move forward. Tune in each week for a dynamic conversation with experts, Colorado adventurers, and residents that explores the ins, outs, and specific nuances of buying the perfect mountain home or selling your dream home in Evergreen, Conifer, Bailey, and surrounding areas to catch a glimpse into the Colorado lifestyle that's a part of you. Thanks for joining us today. Our guest is Kevin A. Malsh. Kevin is with Pine Financial Group. How are you today, Kevin? I'm fantastic, Robert. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. Thanks. Good. Well, tell me about yourself and why you chose a career in uh, financial services. Yeah, so I got started. Um, I was in the Army and I was, you know, I was working in the Army, but making a little bit of money, not very much, but I was saving the money because look, when you're in the army, you don't have a ton of expenses. I was living in the barracks. I was eating at the mess hall while everybody else was going out. And I decided, you know, what am I going to do with this little tiny nest egg that I'm starting to grow? <laughs> and I started, started reading books and, you know, the rich dads and the poor dads and, and these other books. And, and I decided real estate's really the, the way I want to grow my wealth. Bought my first house, lived in it for two years, moved out had roommates helping me pay the mortgage. Uh, and when I moved out, I put a tenant in there. And then I saw, you know, the cash flow every month. And I saw the appreciation and the tax benefits. And I saw all of these wonderful things that you get from investing in real estate. So I decided to really focus in on that. And I started buying a house or two every month. And I was going to school and working. And that's kind of how I got my start. I love the financing side of real estate, Robert. It's it's how you structure the deal. It's how you put everything together. So I migrated to the lending side and started raising private capital so I could help more real estate investors. So how long have you been doing it, Kevin? You sounded like you started out right away. And yeah. boy, what a what a great way to go. And did you have good mentors around you? Or, I know the book uh, Robert Kiyosaki wrote, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But um, and how did, you know, it sounded like you, you really hit the ground running. Yeah, it's very interesting because I purchased a few books, um, Multiple Streams of Income by Peter Conti and David Finkel were the names of the authors. And, you know, there was two books, they're very similar, but there were two separate books, same authors. And I literally used those books and started negotiating lease option transactions, went online and found some forms and just bought them off the, <laughs> off the internet and started doing deals and it was a slow process at first as I was learning and falling on my face and getting back up. And Peter and David were offering a mentorship program. And back then it was dirt cheap. It was $5,000 to, to have a year of mentoring with these two. So I was like, that's a no brainer for me. So I, I started that and it really accelerated uh, growth from there. Did you start in Colorado or were you in another state when you started out? Uh, Colorado. So I'm a native Colorado. Okay. I grew up in Jefferson County. I know you oh, just wow. talked to your, you're cool. in a, I think you're in Jefferson County too, right? Yeah, yeah. Conifer, Evergreen Pine. Yep, yeah, you yeah, bet. Yep. Yeah. So I, I grew up in Jefferson County, um, went into the Army, got stationed at Fort Carson, which is in Colorado Springs. So I think I'm supposed to be in Colorado. Yeah, so most of my investing has been in and around Denver. Great. Well, what inspired you, Kevin, to, uh, to form Pine Financial Group? So I started raising private capital and lending it out in 2006 with a partner. Her name was Susan. And, and when 2008 hit and everything was falling apart, Susan panicked and she decided it's much safer to teach people how to do real estate than to actually do real estate. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of people that aren't successful go into coaching and that kind of thing. She was very successful at that, uh, but not so much on the deal side. I'm a trenches guy. I want to be in the deals. I want to put them together. So we separated and I started Pine in, in 2008. And what exactly does Pine Financial Group do and what do you specialize in? Yeah, fantastic question. We bring in private capital. We have several mortgage funds. Our most recent one is a public fund. We talk about that if you want. That's been a lot of fun. Um, but we use those funds from individual investors and loan it out to real estate investors to do fix and flips. Do A lot of people talk about the Burr strategy, which is basically fixing and refinancing uh, some new construction, and a little bit of commercial repositioning bridge loans, of so commercial bridge loans. So um, there's a couple facets to what you do then. You, rent, you loan out money, and it's based, 
in visiting with a colleague of yours, it's based on the deal. So you loan on the deal, but you also allow um, investors to participate in the capital and, and get paid an interest rate, uh, which is pretty good. Yeah, it's fantastic. And because it's a public offering, I'm allowed to advertise with it, which is amazing because all of the fundraising I've done up until now, has been private. It has to be, look, you and I know each other. We have a relationship. Now I could accept your investment. Now I could just accept it. So it's great. It's, and it's a promised 8% return. So that's an attractive return for investors. And, and yeah, so that's, that's going fantastic. Yeah, especially today, that's an incredible rate. So if I was um, to uh, work with you and uh, purchase a property as a fix and flip, how would that work? Uh, just kind of walk us through kind of an overview of uh, that process. Yeah, so the, the process would start with a pre-approval. Um, it's very quick and easy, maybe a 60 second process. And then we could issue you commitment letters. These are totally free. We don't pull credit or anything until you have a, a project to work on. So it's really risk-free. And these commitment letters have no property address, no loan amount. So it's very generic. That way you could use it for multiple offers because look, we all know it takes many offers to get one successful uh, deal that where the numbers are going to work. So we want to be able to use that letter over and over and over. Once you finally get the project, then you give us a call, give us the contract. We're going to need a scope of work. So basically your budget, what are you going to do to the property? That's how we're going to value it. We need to know what is the project going to be when it's finished. We get the valuation done, um, and then we just walk you, hold your hand right up until the closing. Um, after closing, we issue the money to you in draws, just like a construction lender would do. So we know that the property is being repaired as promised. And then you sell it and make your money. And the difference, Kevin, between purchasing a property as a, maybe a primary residence and doing it as an investment based on the deal, um, that's really quite different, isn't it? Because you look at how it looks, what's it going to look like when it's rehabbed. And certainly we, we don't know what the, the market looks like. We don't have a crystal ball, but the difference between that is quite stark, isn't it? Between just getting a regular loan on your house and, and doing an investment loan. Yeah, we get calls pretty regularly, people wanting us to finance their primary homes. Um, and so it could make sense to borrow money to rehab your primary home and then refinance it into some kind of permanent financing. The problem with that is there's so much regulation around consumer lending and a primary home loan would be considered a consumer loan. Hard money lenders don't loan on those anymore. It's just too much uh, red tape and there's uh, restrictions on foreclosures and pricing and all of this. So if you're looking for a true hard money rehab lender like Pine Financial, it has to be on a non-owner occupied investment property. Um, so we're looking at yeah, like you said, we want the deal to be solid. We want to make sure the best we can that you're going to get into a project that makes you money. And I'm sure you have lots of clients that have done business with you for years. I mean, it's a matter of, you know, getting a comfort level with things. Are you seeing with the market changing, is it, uh, what are your thoughts on the current market and, and how do you see it changing and buyers, investors coming back into the market? Were they on the sidelines for a while? How's that look? Yeah, yeah, so interesting. I, I swear to you, we talk about this every single day in the office. I'm sure you you do too with, with your clients. And people are very curious because it's something like we haven't seen before. You look at past recessions and there, there's something that, that creates it, like the dot-com, for example, or the savings and loan crisis or the pandemic or uh, obviously the 2008 credit crash. What's causing it now? Very different than all of that. It's the government intervention, right? It's the pumping in capital, spiking inflation, and then trying to control it by raising rates. And that's what's putting us into a tailspin. Um, what do I think is going to happen? I Look, I really don't know. I, I would predict if I had to a somewhat soft landing because we have such strong jobs and we have good equity in the properties. In fact, did you know, Robert, that there's record equity, record low loan to values in single family real estate right now? Uh, that's going to give us a little bit of a buffer there so we can absorb some of that um, loss. And there's a ton of money on the sideline. You're hearing it and reading about it constantly. Once we see some softening, you're going to see uh, investors going into the market, which I think will keep keep prices relatively stable. Uh, but look, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, I get that, Kevin. You say soft landing. Do you mean like moving into the spring, that sort of a thing, kind of as we get ready to start the new year that we'll see that market kind of 
um, being more favorable, possibly? You know, a lot of people are predicting that. Um, they think that inflation will be under control early next year, and then we'll see a decrease in interest rates. What if the recession comes a decrease in interest rates? So we can already count on the recession. In fact, I think we're already there. And once we have that, we'll have decreasing interest rates, which will which will pop the uh, which will pop the market. Do I think it's going to be in the spring? I don't. I think it's going to be a little bit slower ride down. It's not going to be a, a spike, most likely, um, because some of the reasons I, I just mentioned. So we're probably looking a year to 18 months based on historic uh, recessions that impacted real estate uh, like this one will. Probably 12 to 18 months, and then you'll start the recovery from there. Yeah, it's certainly changing. It always is changing, and, and it's, very, it's quite different. You can notice quite a different, just in the retail or the real estate residential side from the first of the year to now. Before we got on the call, I was talking to Kevin about a call I had with a seller and we're talking about things that, you know, marketing report for where the website traffic's coming from, which we haven't really had that dialogue in a few years because yeah. properties have been selling so quickly. Yeah. So it is quite different. So if I came to you, Kevin, and I have, let's say I had a HELOC on my private residence, can some of that be used towards, um, funding along with um, the money that you guys would provide? Absolutely. And that's a, actually a fantastic way to, to take on projects. I think if you don't have a HELOC on your primary home, you should absolutely do that. Most people have equity at this point because of the rapid appreciation. So yeah, go get your, your line of credit. That way you have access to the funds if you need it, but you don't pay interest if you don't use it. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect tool. Um, for us, we have two loans. We have the 100% rehab loan. So that's basically what we talked about earlier, Robert, where we finance the purchase and the construction. We also have a 90% acquisition loan, uh, which we'll find, just like it sounds, we fund 90% of the acquisition. You would fund all of the repairs and 10% down. The benefit there is it's a little cheaper and it's super fast. We could close within a day or two if we had to because we don't have a, an appraisal requirement on that loan. But that would be the perfect product to use if you had a line of credit uh, to help fund the construction and the down payment. So yeah, that would kind of streamline things. Uh, it sounds like, gosh, um, what should people consider? Uh, they're looking into an investment loan. I know you've kind of gone over a lot of information, but what specifically are some things overall? Yeah, it's probably just like what you tell your clients. I, that's a tough one to answer. I need to know what your goals are. I mean, what are you trying mm -hmm. to accomplish? And, and let's figure out how we could help you get there. Um, we have a very specific product, but we we are experts when it comes to real estate finance. I've been doing that for two decades. I understand financing real estate. And we're happy to help anybody figure out how to best fund a deal. Um, so yeah, I think it's a tough question to answer because I don't know what the goals of the client are. <clears throat> yeah, real specific for each person and what their objectives are, how old they are, what they're trying to do with their funds. So yeah, that, that's real important. Maybe a consultation to, to figure that out. And what advice would you give somebody looking to purchase their very first real estate investment? Something similar where you'd sit down and, and kind of see where they're at and go from there? Yeah, a couple. I, man, actually, they're just popping in my mind all this advice I could give right now. But I think the first one is to actually do it. So many people will get, mm -hmm. uh, what is it, uh, paralysis or uh, yeah. whatever. Overthink it and you yeah, just don't, you you don't, make, it. They don't take action. Yeah. The number one mistake real estate investors make is by not buying that first property. Look, you're going to make mistakes. Just accept that. Don't be so afraid of that because uh, mm -hmm. otherwise you won't do the deal. So make your mistakes, make them early then and move on from that. So that's the best advice. And um, don't try to time the market. I know a lot of people are sitting on the sideline right now because um, there is a little fear. They don't know what's mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're just going to sit on the sideline and wait, then, um, then you're going to miss out. I'm telling you. Yeah, that's so true. The fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And it's, it's certainly out there now, stirring around and that sort of thing. What's the biggest mistake, Kevin, that you've seen people make uh, investing in real estate? I'll tell you the biggest mistake I've made. And then <laughs> I could give you some more mistakes that I see some clients making. Um, the biggest mistake I made was incorrectly setting my goals. We talk all the time about how important goal setting is and and pursuing those goals. And, you, and then you have, you know, all these strategies to help you accomplish that. Um, but the goal itself is so incredibly powerful that you have to be um, cognizant of, on, on how you're doing that. So to give you an example of what I'm talking about here, my goal when I was very young was to buy one house every single month. And I hear other people say goals similar to that. 
That's a number of transactions. Well, what happened was I started accepting not very good deals so I could hit my one house a month goal. Now I had this portfolio of decent properties, nothing that was, yeah, well, there were some good ones, but decent property portfolio, let's say. And then 2008 hit, what happened? Yeah, I lost everything. So here I am before 30 years old, a millionaire, and then I lose it all um, because what I thought was, <laughs> what I thought was net worth was actually, you know, phantom. It's just paper, paper value. So I would say setting your goals more appropriately would be the, a big mistake. What I see other people make is they go out and find a, a good deal, good fix and flip, and they make a ton of money. Fantastic. But now they're arrogant and they go out and try to do two or three or four at a time. And then we get to a market like we're now where it's softening just a tad and sitting on the market just a little bit. Contractors aren't showing up for work when they're supposed to. And then all of a sudden you have four or five mortgage payments that you have to make and you can't afford it. So taking on more than you could actually handle um, would be a big mistake I see investors make as well. Yeah, <clears throat> those are some really good good examples. But like you said, you got to take the step, put your, put your toe in the water and, and take the chance and do it. There's always those things that can happen, but it seems as if you surround yourself around good people, you know, finding a deal that works and making, you know, it looks like a good deal, not getting too caught up in doing so many and, you know, and then, you know, our ego always gets involved and we, we feel like we, you know, have things figured out and then life kind of comes around and corrects that That's for right. us. But so a lot of good information there. Who is, um, who's your ideal client, Kevin? My ideal client. So we have two sides to the business. We have our private investors who are helping us fund deals. And then we have our borrowers that are out there actively investing in real estate. So we have the active investor and the passive investor. On the active side, we're looking at for mom and pop real estate investors that want to do rehab. So whether you're buying properties to rehab and rent out, or if you're buying them to fix and flip, like you see on TV, you know, the onesie, twosie kind of thing, that's, that's really what we're looking for. We want to help groom investors to make them super successful. Um, we have, you know, quite the track record of helping investors start their business and, and then they grow into like multimillionaires, right? So that feels very, very good for us. Um, on the private or the passive side, we're just looking for someone that wants, uh, wants to make a, a decent return without any effort, you know, something that you can count on, something that's stable in an unstable time. Gosh, 8% is, is really phenomenal. And how long in the, on that private side, the, the invest or the, uh, you know, participating in their capital, what's the commitment for that? And is there an amount of money that's a minimum and how does that work? That's the best part here, Robert. There's no minimum time commitment at all. We don't make our money on charging investors fees. We, we don't charge investors any fees at all. So our money is made from borrowers. When we originate a loan, we charge an origination fee and the spread between our note rates and what we pay our investors, which is at 8%. So don't worry about fees. Don't worry about a lockup period or getting your money back early. None of that's an issue. We had a minimum of 25000 to get into the fund because of what's going on in the stock market and crypto and bonds and everything. We have decided to lower that to $10,000. That way we can help more people get some stability in their portfolios because that's what we desperately need right now. Boy, that's amazing. And, and you're exactly right. When you look at the stock market losing 22 to 25% this year and, and having some stability uh, at least in your money. Gosh, are you seeing that grow then? People kind of realizing that and, and wanting to wanting to invest with you? Yeah, I've seen two, two sides of it. Absolutely. People are looking and desperate for stability and they have confidence in what we're doing because everything's backed by real estate. I mean, that's a real asset, which is a hedge, by the way, to inflation, right? Real estate is, a, is one of the best hedges for inflation. So if people have confidence in that and they're investing with us because the stock market's crazy. But we also have on the other side, people don't want to, um, withdraw money from the stock market because they're waiting for the, for the, yeah. up, right. They've already taken Absolutely. their losses. I don't want to take it. I don't want to take my uh, lumps and sell and take my losses. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing people try to ride it out as well. So I, I think we're seeing a little bit of both, but historically I've been doing this for 14 years and as Pine Financial and historically when there's instability in the market, we do better. Yeah, that's great. Well, it's like you said earlier, don't try to time the market. Right. So, and it's hard not to do. Well, I really appreciate your great information, Kevin. Is there anything that we didn't discuss that you might like to add? I was going to give your viewers or your listeners a free report if they are interested in, in private yeah, lending. Um, we would love to work with you if you want to invest with us. But if you're out there doing it on your own, that's totally fine too. You'll probably make more money. 
the problem is people are getting doing that and they're getting caught because they don't know what they're doing and they're making mistakes. So I wrote a report to help people understand that business a little bit. Um, yeah, so that'd people, be great. Yeah, it's just the pinereport.com, the pinereport.com. So the uh, best way to go to that, Kevin, uh, they could just go to that, that domain yep. name? Yep. Just, just, okay. just type it up, thepinereport.com. It'll redirect you to our website where you could download the report for free. That'd be, that'd be great. And then as far as getting a hold of you, once they get to that site, would it have your contact information and that sort of thing if they wanted to reach out? Yeah, or our, our site's pinefinancialgroup.com, um, or you can email me directly. I, I respond pretty well to emails. Calls are tough. Um, a lot of times I'll get messages and then I'll have someone on my team return those phone calls. Uh, but emails, I'm still I'm still the one responding to all the emails. So uh, email's good. It's Kevin at pinefinancialgroup.com. Wow, that's great. Well, thanks, Kevin. I really appreciate your time and um, look forward to uh, hopefully a, a very interesting 2023. We'll see how yeah, it goes. I hope, I hope your business thrives <laughs> in, the new, in this new year. And you as well. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Robert. To the Foothills, a Colorado lifestyle and real estate podcast. On the podcast, I interview real estate experts, Colorado adventurers, and residents who enjoy the serenity and lifestyle of living in our mountain communities. Tune in each week for a conversation that explores the ins and outs of buying the perfect mountain home or selling your dream home, and catch a glimpse into the Colorado lifestyle that's a part of you.